Hello and welcome back to Podcasting as Praxis. I'm David, my pronouns are he and him. I'm James, my pronouns are they and them. I'm Jamie, my pronouns are he and him. I'm Rob, mine are he and him. And I'm Alistair, my pronouns are also he and him. Hooray. Podcast. Got it in one, baby. Exactly. Brought to you by the power of drugs. <laughs> Better drugs living through and- chemistry. Drugs mm. and taurine, the two things this podcast relies on. It's not just taurine, mm. it's like vitamin B12. Uh, I think there's some water in there, allegedly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're working to remove that. Yeah, that's not yeah, juice. So, so tonight's main topic is about the dangers of H2O to the human body. Yeah. Yeah, it's only a two away from uh, something very nasty, so I, I don't trust yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> why we recommend <laughs> drinking only pure food colouring at <laughs> two litres a day yeah e-, e numbers are safe E's a very reassuring letter so I've yeah. heard the E's are good yeah, <laughs> yeah. can confirm I think, uh, I think a wise philosopher once said that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Sorry, did you want me to start an episode or something? Or are we just hanging around nah. for fun? Just going to chill out for the week. We're just yeah. vibing. We've all taken yeah. E and we're just sitting here in a feeling of love. No, no. You no. have not taken E. Um, no, I've never <laughs> taken E in my life. I'm the least E person in the planet. So, yeah. yes. Everybody knows. Yeah, never things did. we didn't like to heal. <laughs> <laughs> the safest assumption of all assumptions. My neurochemistry is too fragile to fuck around with anything that's not prescribed by my doctor, frankly, so... Wrong. Mm, My neurochemistry is too (laughs) fragile to not fuck around with things, really, because leaving it as it is is just a fucking disservice to myself. I am just beautiful in any way. Doing the equivalent Uh, of trying to Maybe Rob is on the E tonight. (laughs) Don't need it. Rob, why don't you... You You know why I don't need it? Because I've got levelling up to talk about, you know. Just... Oh, (laughs) fuck it, yes. (laughs) <laughs> the things that <laughs> time for comment, yes. commentary at them. I, I yeah. held it in my hands and I said, "Does this spark joy for the podcast?" And I said, "Yes, it did." Um, now the the, uh, the 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 Which latest part? the latest the Rob part, <laughs> yeah, mm. the me part. The uh, latest announcements of the uh, leveling up funds are out, uh, and lots of them weirdly seem to be going to like really marginal constituencies where like Tory MPs are just about holding on like by their fingernails, basically, which is which is oh, weird. Funny. It's 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 not what you'd expect, basically. But you know, among all the various silly projects, uh, there was just the one winner I wanted to briefly. Yeah, sing sorry, out. sorry um, guys, I need to move all of these pork barrels out of my office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you if you're listening, Jeremy Hunt, we too are a Tory marginal podcast. If you shower us with millions, then you know maybe, maybe, just maybe, um, we'll accept the definition of pork barrel to include pepperami. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, standard, the, to be fair, like the standard Brent crew drum, but filled with pepperami. <laughs> I mean, that's that's uh, that's what we do in Britain. We do we do what Americans do, but just low budget. So, like a barrel full of pepperamis and not even actual pork is exactly what we should be expecting. Yeah, and oh, also man. like every time an MP sends us a pepperami, we will withhold one nasty comment about them. So, I think this is a pretty sound deal, frankly. We no, that's that's by the barrel. It should be it should be one pepperami, but with the girth of a crude oil barrel. I'd be just as nasty at them, but around a mouthful of pepperoni. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Work stoppage when you think forget, about it. Forget stuff their mouths with gold. Stuff their mouths with pepperonis. Yeah. Jo- join, our, join our Discord for the totally unregulated barrel of pepperoni secondary futures market. <laughs> Save it for the break, Rob. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, we should, probably like, should mention that, shouldn't we? Um, we're we're doing all- ads now. So, uh, yeah, the ads are for us. Like, you, you'll hear the ads, but uh, subscribe to stop hearing the ads. Yeah, it's the only way to stop us or to encourage us. This is your yeah. only Basically, warning. Yeah, we'll just do this the one time. Anyway, so the the one um, bit that I wanted to, uh, from the levelling up thing that I wanted to single out was, um, this is from Inside Housing, a £118 million loan to accelerate the delivery of up to 750 homes in Canary Wharf. Alongside oh a life, 
<laughs> have you always wanted to live uh, amongst the bankers? This is this is your choice. Now, have you, have you always wanted? Have you always wanted to live uh, like within walking distance of overpriced patisseries and waitros and a bunch of pricks on more cocaine than you'll ever see in your life? Uh, <laughs> I've yeah, been to Edinburgh, to and the answer is no. <laughs> uh, it's not just uh, 750 homes though there will also be a life sciences hub as well as commercial space and a healthcare facility so it's not all bad news you know now if you mm. OD on cocaine you can just go you know around the corner yeah the see one, the healthcare the facility how wellness oriented is it going to be <laughs> yeah the one the one complaint I've always had about Canary Wharf is that there wasn't enough commercial space mm. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> I mean, apparently, and this boat really covers a galloping shock to any of you, but, like, Canary Wharf itself is really struggling since, like, working from home became a real thing, especially in, you know, white-collar jobs. And office space just commands, like, less of a of a premium and is therefore literally worth less. So, you know, I'm not can sure because I, I tried to find some say, more though, details. Can I just say a blue, blue, blue? I don't give a fuck. Do you know yeah, yeah. the world's smallest violin is playing the highest area. It's uh, just fuck it. Fuck them. Like, yeah, I'm pretty but sure the- there's parts of Glasgow which have been struggling since well before work from home. Can we get some of that cash, maybe? No? Never mind. No, of course not. Um, no, I mean, not look, the reason I mentioned... Not to Lord Anal Shug. <laughs> the, yeah, the, 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 the reason that, look, like, the, I mentioned this is not to make one you, like... Canary Wharf is not going to survive without a hundred million, 118 million pounds worth of investment. It just, it needs to be saved. It's a... Cult site of cultural heritage needs to be preserved. <laughs> is that um is that building that melts Lamborghinis in Canary Wharf? Uh, yes. No, uh, that the, is the uh the walking talkie, which is in um the city of London. Yeah, oh, we'll just Not do it the, with it then. You know, capital so, C, city of London. Didn't didn't uh didn't another car get like fucking murked outside of Canary Wharf, but by a building that was reflecting light from Canary Wharf? Uh, no, I, that's. That's, well, That's the, the, the one that everyone knows is the, the walkie talkie. It's it, yeah. it does happen. It's been happening more and more because of uh, who knows why. Uh, why is things? Why is everything getting warmer? Um, but the one that everyone's mm. seeing. Well, it could is, be climate uh, change, or it could be that it's a stupid idea to build a fucking skyscraper shaped like Archimedes' death ray. <laughs> <laughs> I love to go to work in the vivarium of London. <laughs> Would not recommend <laughs> sprinkling a little cocaine at the top of a varium just you know, <laughs> to get them going. One hundred and eighty billion pounds to develop a command and conquer obelisk to be erected in the middle, mid, <laughs> middle of Canary Wharf. I, I would approve of that. Actually. Look, the shards already there. We can just retrofit that fucker. Uh, yeah. If it turns out that that's just like Kane's long plan for a brotherhood of Nod to emerge in Canary Wharf, I'm down for this. Yes, let's do it. You don't yeah. realise it, but it's actually made out of a Tiberium alloy. <laughs> Look, if if it turns out that one Canada Square in Canary Wharf is actually a secret temple of Nod, I will completely 180 my position on Canary Wharf. I like <laughs> yeah. you do, in fact, gotta hand it to them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hand it to them until they build this giant skyscraper that looks like a Tesla coil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the shard is already there. Yeah, well, what sure do you think the one hundred eighty million pounds is for, Jamie? Like, it's it's luxury living and you know a death ray. What what, what more do you want? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm with Jamie on this. That, that the shard is more like an obelisk of nod. We're not in the good timeline where the Soviet Union continues to exist to this day. I'm sorry. Um, you know, if, if you if you want that, you're going to have to go talk to Albert Einstein and get him to build you a chronosphere. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I just want to be able cool. to. Walk the streets of London and hear the, Get him on the phone. noise that the Tesla calls make. <laughs> just see people in like a three block radius, like all just dump, jump behind the nearest bin to, to avoid being hit. <laughs> yeah, and then one guy gets hit by it and you get to see their skeleton. It's all, yeah. all upside, do a little dance. As as yeah, concerned. it's fucking incredible. Yeah. Yeah, they float off we'll, the ground and wiggle their arms up and down. It's great. We'll, uh, we'll add get Einstein to reinstate the Soviet Union to the list of things to do with a time machine that me and David came up with on Peace of Home yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I mean, look, the reason I mentioned this is obviously not to feel bad for, you know, the, the property developers who own um, Canary Wolf, which incidentally is the Qatari sovereign investment fund and the uh, infrastructure and private equity giant Brookfield, uh, who, like, 
uh, between them, I think, are easily over 100 billion in assets. So, like, I don't feel bad for them. But, you know, that's the reason they're getting this. And I have the strong suspicion that part of that 118 uh, million pound loan is going to be to, you know, do the thing that, that they've been threatening for a while, which is to refurbish office blocks to become apartments, which, like, every time that's been tried, it's been a fucking oh, nightmare. Gee, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the guy that lives in, like, <laughs> five Canada Square to get in an overlook over the uh like the overground line where uh protesters get to super good themselves to it. which to be fair it would be a great sight because it's very funny when that happens <laughs> is this about yeah, so like living i've heard about yeah so so like one of the 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 like the people who owned part of canary wolf was like they put out this bullshit press release that i read was like oh yeah canary wolf is actually really sought after by property buyers as well as rent renters and demand vastly uh exceeds supply and you know it's great blah de blah and it's um and i'm just thinking like well if it's also great and desired and, and high priced why do you need that leveling up funding then i think you know maybe the it's it's not one of those things but really, it's just, look, it's just part of the reason the Tory product exists is to support, you know, property developers and keep their values up. And this is part of the part of the bargain. So, you know, that's, you know, leveling up doesn't work for anybody except for donors to the Tory party, which is not a, a galloping shock. But that's just briefly why I wanted to, to mention it. Mm-hmm. Unless, unless you're trying to level up the tech tree. <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly that that is 100 percent true um but speaking speaking of people in bed with uh, property developers and others uh it's been another two weeks or so of um fiscal responsibility bullshit from labor specifically this time from uh liz kendall and rachel reeves and i thought we should spend a little bit of time talking about the you know upcoming plans for the government that may or may not come depending on whether or not you believe david which you should, and it wouldn't. Mm. Yeah. yeah uh, a this resounding is, uh, update from Liz Kendall on how youths should be using computers. A pre- mm. I mean, oh. the, actually, uh, the, the resounding update, this is from um, a piece, of course, in The, in the Telegraph uh, interviewing Liz Kendall. Quote, Labour will fight the next election, election as the party of work and wa- warns the jobless, jobless that they will not be able to <laughs> live jobless. a life on benefits. <laughs> benefits claimants to be retitled as joblets yeah they're gonna fire the the fire the job seekers out of a cannon into job land where jobs grow on joblets (laughs) (laughs) joblet sounds like a particularly nasty cut of meat basically is what i'm thinking Mm. just Mm. Yeah, Liz, uh, quote the Telegraph again. Liz Kendall said, young people will be told they have a... (laughs) (laughs) They have a responsibility to accept jobs or training opportunities when they are offered. Now, look, again, much like the leveling up is not new news, but why I I briefly wanted to talk about this is I have, with the rare exception from, you know, the brief interlude with Jeremy Corbyn, I have heard nothing from Margaret Thatcher or Gordon Brown or Tony Blair or David Cameron or George Osborne well, that could be or because, Boris Johnson. Uh, she's dead. No, but it's like, but the the thing is always the same. Like, what is you know, the Tories are the party of work. Labour is the party of work. We're going to have more people on benefits. More young people need to be in jobs. Like they've always say the same fucking thing, and we're here forty years later at this point now. And it's just like, yeah, why? well, that's just because we, we're not fucking doing it hard enough. If what if we killed more people for like talking back to their work culture? But that would sort everything out. Well, actually, I part of, there is a there is a little bit more subs to this, uh, Jamie. And they they have uh, it, it, this specifically again for for young people. Uh, what they are going to do is uh, they are going to hire uh, one thousand new careers advisors. So you can go to a guy who can tell you that your job is to be a future binman. I thought AI was supposed to do that. Look, being a binman is an honest, you know profession Job. that should be yeah. respected so like the, the the main the main issue with this is like you know it's exactly being a what fu- being a future bin man is bin man is even cooler because you get like a fucking do you know what i mean a hat with a light on it and like cyber gloves to pick up the bin with mm-hmm. <laughs> possibly instead maybe they replace the bin lorry with a mech how cool would that be <laughs> you just piloting one guy piloting a mech around just picking up the bins and just emptying them into his backpack 
Just a slightly I mean, depressed just... Transformer doing the rounds going, oh, yeah. well, it's a living. Yeah. I mean, this is just part 11 million of, uh, you know, the Labour right is, uh, we promise we're not going to discipline la- uh, discipline capital. We're only ever going to discipline Labour because we need to force people into all these shitty jobs that uh, you literally cannot survive off of um, unless we take away any sort of social safety net. They should absolutely yeah. do my Transformer Bin Man plan because then in like another 50 years' time, you'll have like old people on Facebook too going, remember when the Autobots were hard? <laughs> what, no, what we need to do is arm the Bin Men and then no one can make those shitty memes about how the, uh, the Bin Men used to be hard because this, this, this time around, they're just going to shoot you. No, but like, they only shoot like, you for woke reasons like mixing yeah. the recycling. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, you know, quote, quote Liz Kendall uh, again briefly. Labour is the party of work. Labour was founded by working people for working people. It is our name. <sighs> and under Keir Starmer and the Change Labour Party, work will be at the heart of what we do. We believe in the value of work. You know that goes. Like, well... Labour is the party you've got to fuck yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Labour is the party you've come down here and fucking make me. That's what Labour is the party of now. Like, <laughs> anyone needs me, I'll be on the dole. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's it's fucking incredible as well. It's just, I mean, a you know now there's even less difference between the parties. But this is kind of they they they've been doing this since I think pretty much Starbuck walked through the door. But this like labor is the party of work. You know, this like you know because they always talk about working families, working parents, mm-hmm. working work, 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 as if the you know it's 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 almost a sort of Protestant like Whiggist thing that like the thing that ennobles you know the the, the ambigans the smallest man is is yeah. is work itself, as if you need to toil in order to prove that you are a valued member of society. It's what just you it's, do? labor is the party of set you free. <laughs> Honestly, fucked a lot of them. I'm sick of hearing about the cunts. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, the the, the problem specifically, and this was echoed across a, a number of interviews also by uh, Starmer and Reeves themselves, was like, um, yeah. come how this are we year's get- general election, if it happens, and it, you know anyone who doesn't vote for meteorite is dead to me. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is the that is the official you know pod, podcasting as practice pick. Oh, it's the lock of the week. To, <laughs> yeah. Vote meteorite. Yeah, right. No, it's a writing that, candidate. So yeah, make sure you get that on your ballot. I mean, so so uh, so the the thing that they've been saying because like you know there was there was the new budget which I don't want to go into too much detail because it's all just PR for the election. It's a bit boring, but like um, uh, the. the, the now Labour's being asked, like, right, how are you going to, you know, you keep talking about growing the economy, how are you grow the economy? And they have two answers. It's like reform planning laws, a bunch of bullshit. And the other one, consistently, like, and that's a new thing in the last week or two, is they say, um, how are you going to grow the economy? And then they immediately start talking about the number of, like, people on sickness and disability benefits, that there's, like, 600,000 of them now. And they just start, like, making ominous noises that, like, the sick and the disabled need to start like pulling their weight because you know wow those shifty golly layouts. gee it's almost as though we had a fucking pandemic very recently uh maybe uh until right now still also that may ha- may or may not have had an effect on some people's fucking health but no what's happened is these people are lazy and they definitely don't have any kind of disability uh so therefore back into fucking mcdonald's with you if you can even get a job that good yeah, I mean, they just won't do anything for the sick and disabled from COVID because there would be an inherent admission of liability in it. If they, and if they that's really not that. true. They will definitely do something for them. That thing that they're going to do is end the lives quicker so they don't need to hear about it anymore. If Labour really were interested in getting disabled people back into work, they would be promising a slew of protections and, uh, you know rights for people who are in work who can uh, you know ensuring flexibility better uh, guarantees on sick pay and improved sick pay things like this things that mean that if you have a disability that uh, you know might wax and wane in terms of its severity and impact you will be able to keep your job and be able to work as a disabled person but no it's not that it's fuck you you're not going to get anything if you don't shuffle off down to fucking starbucks yeah. 
I mean, it's I, I genuinely, like, I find it sort of almost, I mean, look, again, this is nothing new. This is the most, like, sort of latter era Blair time of, of all time, you know? Like, it was just... Um, um, uh, yeah, we've when, tried when Blairism and we're all out left, of ideas. When all they had left was, like, just punishing people viciously and consistently like that was what well, that was quite literally all they had left like that was just that was the entire game that that was w w what they had remaining and it's just it's to, to see it again just like so nakedly i get i've asked this question many times i know it's rhetorical but it's like what the f like what the fuck are these people for like why why do we why do we have them why do we need them what what you know what what is any of this for you know like what what is the, what is the point of these people, um, and and the point of these people is uh, and this is I'm, I'm on the switch now to a fucking long fucking profile in the Telegraph Weekend magazine of of Rachel Reeves, which was a disturbing fucking read in the altogether, and I read it. Oh, because is I this is this the one? You. Is this the one where they caught her in a toilet? <laughs> yes, yeah, it is the one where she had that really weird like picture taken of like being a bathroom attendant, or more likely, you know, a gender cop. To be fairly honest, mm. wonderful. Uh, uh, yeah, so like basically, um, I, I, I won't, uh, you know, and we do. She does the traditional thing that they've been doing again for the last two weeks. Uh, quote the Telegraph. Uh, quoting Rachel Reeves, we weren't poor, but we didn't have the money to spare, and my mother wanted to make sure that everything added up. I remember sitting there at the kitchen table and saying, what are you doing? And her explaining to me, I've always felt that it's really important to look after your own money, because, you know, the household budget is the state budget. <laughs> which, no. she, which she, if it is true, she promptly ignored, because uh, let's ask a few questions about Rachel Reeves' uh, parliamentary credit card and what happened to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you call that the curse of remembering, Alistair, and we don't do that mm. in Britain. Yes, as we know, this is the pod the podcast that gives you with the burden of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and just if you want to give like a little bit of you know the, uh, Rachel Reeves the younger, you know how how cool she was as a seventeen year old. She joined the Labour Party aged seventeen, convincing teachers to let her skip school and go door knocking on election day in nineteen ninety seven. She still remembers the thrill of New Labour's landslide victory. It was fantastic. Yeah, so that she could ensure that no one else ever skips school again, lest they get <laughs> fined. I bet the uh, I bet the fucking teachers were like took a lot of convincing to let her skip school. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Can I have the day? Yeah, go, go, go on, run, go now. <laughs> yeah. The whole day. Have you, have you considered taking an extra day? The, Just you know, take the week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yet another example of the, of uh, pulling the ladder up behind themselves, but over just because, again, Britain is a low-rent, bullshit version of America, uh, pulling up the ladder for something completely asinine, skipping school to go and fucking canvas. Hell yes. Labour don't pull the ladder up. That's really the wrong way to think about this. What they do is they get up above the ladder and then they lean over the top of it and they very slowly saw through it while maintaining eye contact with you. <laughs> Honestly, if, I've, if just got, um, I've just got the If you're the 17, fucking... is it even skipping school? Is it not just like being an adult at that point? I think that's called a free period. Yeah, but that's a good question. I genuinely don't don't know. Is there, are you like is there like a duty for you to be in school up to a certain point, or can you just like piss off? Basically? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, like at seventeen, you could still be in school if you were at sixth form, but I'm pretty sure like you can just leave. You can just walk out so, whenever you want because it's not fucking. It's not school. They're not going to send snipers after your parents if you bunk <laughs> off like fucking your A levels or whatever. Pulling the ladder up <laughs> once again. So the extremely annoying synthesis of this is that, yeah, when you're above, I believe at 16, you can basically leave school. That's like the age you're supposed to stay in it until, at least in Scotland, and I think it's in England as well. Um, yeah, I think however, there's some like changes to it recently, but yeah, more or less. However, you when you leave, you have to get like a form signed, because this is the most British thing ever. And if you don't of get that form signed, do. basically discharging you from the system, then it's bunking off. Yeah, but please, also this happened in 1997, form, so who knows what actually were the rules and who cares. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just a little bit more of her, her personal history, because it's, it's... I think it's it, so it, they always... They, well, it's because these people always reveal a little bit too much about themselves. 
Uh, this is about her. She's talking about um, uh, when she stepped down from the shadow cabinet during the Corbyn years. She was working pension secretary under Corbyn, by the way, lest we forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> In the end, have, uh, uh, she had to see off an attempt by Corbinites to deselect her. It was appalling, she recalls. I had to go through a reselection. It was horrible. Oh. An organized group of people trying to deselect me because I'm not enough of a communist or whatever. <laughs> that yeah, that's was right. You should, right doing a lot of you should consider yourself lucky if the communists are trying to deselect you. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> can we not? Can we not select her? I can think of several programs that she'd be an excellent candidate for. <laughs> yeah, move over, Leica. But just to... <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's for me. It's just like it's just the pure fucking entitlement of that, like. Oh, yeah. you know, I had to, there was there was a, so many people wanted to deselect me. It's like, do, you know, just I know, I know. Not surprising, New Labour hates fucking. Oh any my form god, of people try to engage in democracy. Fuck that! Yeah. That's horrendous. <laughs> it's it's it really is fucking Don't just incredible. Don't they know how many hands her dad had to shake to get her that job? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it, it really is, is fucking wild. But then, um, I think this weekend we were, I think it was an interview. She was on telly with, um, you know, uh. Laura Koonsberg, a real fucking, you know, meeting of the minds. <laughs> I mean, and, <yeah. laughs> and like, if anything convinces you to like vote for this, uh, just frankly, just appalling HR manager of a person, David. I did ask you to clip the uh, the audio for this. Yeah, here you go. One of your colleagues scurrilously told me that you care so much about not wasting anything. When you go to big business breakfast, of breakfast <laughs> you get them to nick the pastries and the leftovers and take <laughs> them back to the office. <laughs> Is that true? I, I, I don't think she said nick. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think well, I don't like waste. I don't like waste of expenditure. I don't like any waste. And so when you go to these uh, uh, events and there's all these pastries left out at the end, uh, we ask. Uh, whether we could take them back to the office and share them with uh, colleagues. Uh, living out my values in practice, no waste under a Rachel Reeves <laughs> chancellorship. <laughs> you go. Well, I'm sure you asked very politely, but very politely, it's always good to have you with us in this chair. One of you. Are... Jesus. F imagine Rachel Reeves. Imagine being able to sound less human than ChatGPT. Credit card. <laughs> right. Let's let's just remind ourselves how much she had what, what? on on that credit card. Uh, Rachel Reeves. It was four thousand three hundred yep. something, I think. Four thousand and thirty-three pounds and sixty-three yeah. pence. Thanks, Guardian, for that. Uh, so she had a yeah, and she's had a, she had a parliamentary credit card uh, suspended uh, for owing that much that amount of money. So yeah, she hates waste unless it is literally her uh, wasting. I mean, if you like to call it this, Flesh. taxpayer money. I hate this so much. Yeah, um, it's not, but you know. What was she spending it on? Uh, doodads. Flesh. This and Giggles. that. Flesh. <laughs> New flesh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, during... during a the, nice, a nice new lining for the command capsule. But just imagine <laughs> that, like, you know, you're she, she's sitting there preparing with, I'm sure, a bunch of horrible fucking briefcase cunts who are, like, preparing her for that interview. And it's like, right, what's a fun anecdote to show that you are both, you know, unbelievably frugal, but also a fun human being? Yeah, I'm the person who hoovers up all the mini croissants after the big important breakfast that I just attended because I hate waste. You know, that thing that humanizes you in the eyes of the audience. Returning to the fucking labour mothership with a fucking bin bag full of sausage rolls that you've just scooped off a fucking like room temperature plate. <laughs> sausage rolls? Business. Don't be foolish, Jamie. It's full of where, where a bunch of fucking bankers have like coughed all over it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I can't wait for her to climb into the command seat of the the state, and by state I mean the Soyuz capsule. I mean, the only the only upside of all that, Jamie, is basically that like the coughed over croissants would just be fed to people in Labour HQ, and quite frankly, I can't imagine a better fucking audience for for that stuff. But just mm. yeah, I, I, I the more could, I see I of these people, the more they like they 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 sort of display themselves is like the 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 le like the less human and the less appealing they become. It really is fucking remarkable. I wonder if we could coax her into the capsule with, uh, 
you know, just a, just a little spread in there, just to be like, oh, so it's all going in the bin in ten minutes. So I like, help yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just half fill the close the door behind half- you, so no one can see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can probably just put, just stick a best before date on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one last thing from 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 all of this, and then we'll move on from Labour because they are just really fucking appalling. Um, she was also interviewed because you know it's her big PR weekend. She was interviewed uh, oh. by Sky News and asked about whether Labour would bail out all those councils that are blowing up all over the place. You know, because no, of the obviously decade not. of authority. Asked about whether she would uh, bail out the councils, allow them to raise taxes, or tell them to sink or swim, Mrs. Re- Miss Reeves said, I'm under no illusion about the scale of the challenge that I will inherit if I become Chancellor later this year, and I need to be honest with people. She added, my focus is on reforming the planning system to get Britain building again. If we do those things, we will bring in the tax revenue and we will be able to invest in public services again. There are no shortcuts. That is the way. So if you're no, you won't. Oh, that, shut the fuck up. No, no, you won't. You won't. You won't bring any more fucking money by reforming planning systems right. because <clears throat> pri- because private construction companies are sitting on land in order to maximise the returns on the building of the houses. This is a structural problem that you will refuse to address, and we know this because you are but talking about saving pastries. What if they built the houses even cheaper than before? Yeah. What? What? What if? Yeah. What? What if we could just like build your entire balcony out of mini croissants? <laughs> not what not just the balcony, ins- but the entire facade. What if instead <laughs> of a mortgage for first-time buyers, banks just gave you a bunch of cubes and told you to get on with it, Minecraft style? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that you said we weren't going to talk about the budget and stuff, but. Why is she doing all this shit on her big PR fucking push rather than talking about how she doesn't have a policy left after the Tories did the non-dom thing? Well, I mean, for one, the Tories didn't really do the non-dom thing, but... Well, they didn't, but they did it well enough to the point where Labour can no longer say they're going to do the non-dom thing. So the one fucking way that they had left to raise money is now gone. So their own fucking argument on their own terms no longer makes sense because they boxed themselves into a fucking idiot corner. They weren't going to do it anyway, though, were they? Probably not, no. No. They they would have, but they would have done it to the same non-extent that the Tories have and then said they've done it. It doesn't really matter, but but the point is that... Find it hard to get. Like honestly, this is like fucking trying to get me to care about Game of Thrones. Do you know what I mean? These people aren't (laughs) real. I do not give a fuck what they're up to. It's about as well fucking written. Like, Rachel Reeves is a modern Cersei Lannister, me in The Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck>. Shame. <laughs> anyway, that oh. is enough of all that piss because I can't bear talking about the Labour Party. I want to talk about um, one more bit and then I want to talk about well, and read a article that I read, which is incredibly very normal. Uh, but before we do that, um, I wanted to briefly talk about um, Astrea Academy briefly again uh the anti-shitting school that we talked about with uh with november when we did the episode about what's australia done now (laughs) (laughs) so this is a different school uh also run by them uh it's called the ernulf arnulf ernulf e-r-n-u-l-f I don't know how to pronounce uh, right, that. Right, okay. I'm going to have to ask what Ernulf was doing between the years 1933 to 1945. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I don't really know whether or not this specific school also has, like, the anti-shitting, like, you know, uh, grating that comes down in the other school we talked about. The anti-shitting um, pro-sofa agenda. Yeah. Uh well it definitely like looks uh, looks looks like it. Basically, um education on I'm anti shitting to... pro sofa and I like to take some painkillers and lie down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, t- basically I... <laughs> take that sofa to a local public toilet, David, and you just uh you know hatch it yeah, right there. <laughs> you get a free show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, education uncovered. So I think it's Warren Mansell. Uh, they got their hands or, or were, were given the resignation letter from one of the, the teachers um, from from uh, uh, you know from Beowulf Academy. Um, and I wanted to, to read you a little bit, little, little, little bits from it. Um, children at the school. This is from the article. Children. I at wish the it was all. Written, have- I hope it's all written in old English. That'd be great. <laughs> 
<laughs> everyone sit oh, down that... so we can learn what a thorn is. <laughs> oh, that Grendel, he's always in detention, he is. Um... <laughs> Grendel, pro or anti-shitting? This is important. <laughs> Uh, this is this is from the accompanying article. Children at the school have to carry character cards in which aspects of good or bad behavior can be recorded by staff. The cards feature the trust's Astraea Ascent behavior charts uh... with, a sta- with a statement that says, we want to make good choices using the Astraea Ascent. And the mantra is, it is Stop who I it. am. What the fuck? Yeah, basically there are like it, it's a it's a five step process. I like, think I think the only solution to like you know modern Britain's problems is that we have to start putting teachers through that fucking like test from Blade Runner before they're allowed to work. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should specify, a child is on though, the like, floor shitting and you're not helping them. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing Britain, it would turn into the test from Blade Runner twenty forty nine pretty quickly just testing them to make sure they have no sympathy before we let them work mm. i mean i should specify jamie that like this is this is not the the like the the teachers basically like the teachers uh, you know maybe not all of them but certainly some of them have like the same problem with australia that we do which is that it's a it's an inhuman you know fucking system um but right. then why just did they resign altars, instead they? of burning it down yeah like <laughs> I love to I love to go to Ernolf Academy to just follow orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got him um, out of trouble. <laughs> no, basically, right, if you if you're curious and I don't know if you are, but I'm gonna tell you about it anyway. So I have the or like um uh Education Uncovered had the uh had had a had a photo of the Astraea Ascent chart. Uh, this is also uh you have to carry it around because it's where your punishments are logged on as well if you're a you're a student. Um so basically, the, the Urnolf uh, Chaos Dragon and the ca- and the Dragon of Order. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there are no, it's, there it's, are. Do they, do they is, not sorry. have bins at that school? <laughs> well, Probably I think not. this is very this is very German. I think you're onto something, David, because this is very much papers, please. Like you know, if you if you are a kid at this school and you do not have your disciplinary papers on you at all times, you're going to be what, deported they to detention. Deport you? Cause that'd be that'd be sweet, you know what I mean? They just kicked yeah. you out. We've got no record of you at this school because you you put the fucking like stupid card we gave you in the bin, so you know you get to go home. <laughs> yeah, play Xbox. Incorrectly answering um, back when I'm told tabs. good luck going into the exam. Yeah. Hmm. No, no, so the teacher the, asks the you chart... to put your fingers up for the answer, and you put up three in the wrong way. <laughs> so so the chart basically works as, as, as such um it says the astraea ascent and then it says um what motivates me when i make the right choice and the right choice is to behave as the school wants you to which is as uh you know a little robot um so step step one is also you I know bet the they color don't is... accept, i bet they don't accept anything for a quiet life as a valid answer do they uh, well, sort of. Step one, and this this is coloured in, in like literally in black, and it says, "I want to avoid negative consequences." You know, Same. very. very yeah. <laughs> this is the thing where they're meant to escalate up and take on the right and internalise the right view. Where actually yes. they're doing it for the right reasons, isn't it? It is uh, because step two is I want recognition. Oh, that's and why rewards. they call it the ascent, right? Okay, yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. on board now. This is the fucking yeah. stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, we only called it the ascent because you know Dante's Inferno was already taken, but here we are. Also, only five levels, but um, I step three. I want <laughs> others to trust me and to build relationships. You know, because I I can't talk in the fucking cafeteria, so I I I probably have to develop sign language, I guess, or you know, learn to tap the pipes like like in the fucking Great Escapes or, or something. Um, step four, I want a great future, and step five, when you fully internalize the message of Australia Academy. See, when you is, said when you said tap the pipes, there, my first thought was like you would tap a phone, like there's a bunch of German like fucking guards just listening to water. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be honest, would be a very British school thing to do. Like, there's too much water going through this pipe. Someone's using the fucking toilet again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, step five is, it is who I am. So, like, once once you've sort of ascended the tortuous ranks of Australia Academy, and, and you've internalized everything that they are, they are, then, you know, you are finally a good person. And isn't that nice for you? Yeah, ah. Studious, studiousness guarantees citizenship. Yes, 
Uh, yes, another ne- yes, another day at my wonderful school slash pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah. If so- you don't follow all the rules, then someone follows you around at all times and takes pictures of you in public. Well, I mean, I'm it glad you mentioned like that, David. This sounds because, like, like it's going to end. It sounds like it's going to end with some fucking line that's like, "You must obey, friend computer," and like, what the <laughs> fuck? you, you uh, get what, sent away to go to school on a ship, and you're not heard of for like nine months of the year. At what stage of this like fucking ascent do they like measure your thetans? <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, what they definitely do use this 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 chart for, or at least I imagine the back of the paper is to uh, record infractions. And infractions, we'll talk about a little bit about how quickly those come in a second. But um, like even minor ones are basically an immediate like post school 45 minute detention, and the school does have Jesus. like a habit like of not really informing like the parents on time. So like if you're waiting at the school gate to like get your kid from prison then like basically you might not have been told that you actually need to be there 45 minutes later so like if you have a shift work or something you you can basically go fuck yourself which is very helpful is hello parent or guardian your child is happy healthy and alive yeah does the um <laughs> does the law about like you know getting like fucking bombed your house bombed from the air if your kid skips school does that apply to detention as well <laughs> I mean, no, I, that's I, extra I just... school that's the opposite thing <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, like, can you? Because because you could just tell your kid if you get detention, just ignore it and come home. I, th- I think at that point, like, uh, you know, twenty two SES just like rolls out of Herefordshire and just comes into like tear gas your entire house. <laughs> just imagining like a whole bunch of parents standing outside the school gates asking for proof of life at this point. Yeah, great, awesome. Well, I mean, proof of life uh, is sort of the obvious or like the obverse that this school wants to wants to go for. Um, they, like I said, they're washing your son's <laughs> mouth out with Captain Soap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, like I said, the education and COVID got their hands on a resignation letter from from one of the teachers. Um, quote: I do not agree with the army style discipline that Australia considers normal. I do not feel comfortable walking up it's and down not the even... line. Hold yeah. yourself. For, hold it for a second. I do not feel comfortable no. walking up and down the line of students checking their uniforms. I do not feel comfortable asking students to lift their trouser leg to check for shoes and socks. Because yeah, not they wearing... won't. That will happen to you, baby. Fucking once in the army. Like they'll do it once to be a dick, and then they'll go. I can't be asked anymore. They yeah, will have this to is do that morning. shit on a fucking daily. Yeah. Like, what my point is here, this is fucking worse than the shit that you would need to do in the fucking army. It's going to be more fucking degrading than these literal school children. Oh, this is not the start of the degradation. This is just, you know, I mean, this is just the start. It gets it gets more uh, interesting. Uh, quote the article again. The teacher said that in cases where the child had a an incorrect uniform or like was missing a sock or something, I guess, they were being asked to change in a small room, sometimes in front of other children or adults. Some had had to put shoes and socks <sighs> back on, which had already been worn by someone else. The former resulting, for she said, sake. in sometimes painful blisters or uncomfortable feet for the day. You know, just just fine. And if you thought yeah. that, so actually, genuinely worse than the fucking army quality. Yeah, and if you thought, like I said, this is not welcome just to like- Australia Academy, the school that will give your kid trench foot. <laughs> Stick that on the fucking brochure. It, it it might also you know it, it like I said it's not just for the kids it's also um, like it it applies the same sort of logic to the teachers themselves which is fucking wild. Um, <laughs> quote, the res- quote the resignation letter. I do not agree with the perpetual micromanagement of staff and the lack of development opportunity. This causes staff to feel as if they are constantly watched, patronized, and undervalued. Astrea seems to be forgetting that teachers are educated professionals who do not need to spend 15 minutes in the morning practicing saying good morning. Unfortunately, practicing (laughs) good morning, goodbye, and walk with pace and purpose are the only professional development options available to teaching staff at the uh, (laughs) Bayer Wolf Academy. Mm. (laughs) Oh, like, the whole point of this is that you you make them fucking miserable so that they then go out and take it out in the kids. Like, that's the whole reason that you do that kind of shit. That's what it's, it's all done by design. But, like... 
what are their hiring like requirements? Do they hire any fucking dipshit they can and just like rope them into well it's the only job you'll yeah. probably get Pulse, you're shit. Reckless di- or, uh, disregard for human human rights, uh yeah. and hatred of all mankind. Oh, so well, but this then. is the thing though. So this this is like a fucking extra paid for school. It's got to have some sort of high standards and qualities that it can deliver at least on fucking exam days. So like no. if you're gonna maintain results, you need to have like able, decent teachers to do that. So why are they still there if they're actually fucking decent teachers? Like surely they will just fuck off to a better job very quickly. Well, I'm I'm I glad mean, David, you asked that I, question, David, because like uh, part of the answer at least is one is, of them is. Um, well. Part of the answer is is that in in that town, I think it's called Saint Knots um, in Cambridgeshire. I think it's yeah, it's Cambridgeshire. Uh, there's only one other school that you know if you live locally that you could work at. The prob- uh, only problem is uh, that school's also run by Australia. So if you are a child yeah. and live in that town, you don't get to have a choice. You are just educated by. Oh s- yeah. Yeah, the kids had never have a fucking choice with this kind of shit. Like, I mean, even if they did have a choice, it wouldn't matter because their parents have said we're paying for you to go to this place that's apparently good. Fuck you. But it's the teacher point of view that I'm thinking about. Uh, David, I don't think this is paid in the way you think it is. Isn't this the Academy voucher bullshit, Rob? I don't rightly know if I'm fair, if I'm completely honest with you. Like it, it, it I mean, I, I, I'm sure it, it leads in. I don't think we have vouchers in the UK. Like I don't think that system exists. So like, yeah, it, it, but isn't it isn't it the whole thing that this is these are the academies that are replacing state schooling essentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not on a voucher basis. That's just like you know they just they just took formally oh. you know, <clears throat> uh, 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 you know, public uh, like state schools and then just give them over to private equity, which is yeah, Australia yeah, is okay. a for profit profit education institution it's not you know it's not an alternative it's just a literal turnover all oh, right okay yeah but it gets yeah, yeah. it gets state money rather than private money right well yes, in that case then for. um the teachers all have a moral obligation to just fucking boycott the places and not work in them but i mean it, 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 apart from the teachers they're not the only ones like boycotting this place like so those two schools both in the and one more from also by australia in the cambridge area were like among the only th- f- uh, like were three of the five schools that could not fill their place with students this year, i.e. these places are so shit, even British parents don't want to consider sending their kids there, which is really fucking, you know, then then you've really, really hit the hit the high score as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, considering, I mean, Britain and, you know, much of the West at large is, you know, a country that just dis- detests teenagers to its very core. Uh, mm-hmm. It is, yeah, like, like you say, Rob, it is impressive. <laughs> To be that bad, yeah. And uh, I'll read one last line from from the article, and then uh, uh, we'll we'll move on. But um, quote: At the time of writing, nearly nine hundred people had signed a petition calling for the establishment of a secretary of a secondary school in the Saint Knots area, which is not run by Australia. So, like, they almost got like a thousand who I assume are adults to say, "Please, God, can someone build a school not run by these fucking psychopaths?" Which again, that's British parents saying, "I don't want this for my child." That's pretty, fu- you know. That's pretty fucking impressive. Um, anyway, yeah, when speaking- you've got a critical mass of them that are that fucking opposed to this shit, then clearly something is fucking bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, weirdly enough, to- people don't want to send their kids to the school that is basically the high school out of Starship Troopers. <laughs> um, so I wanted to. You see that uh, at the moment, they're all yeah. praying for it to turn into Buenos Aires. <laughs> Hi, this is Rob. I'm disturbing your delightful in ear entertainment to tell you that we have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash praxiscast. You can go there for more episodes, our Discord, bonus clips, and much, much more. This is also me begging you for your money in exchange for goods and services. Thank you. Oh, very well then. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Get ourselves some snacks. Bye. So for tonight's main story, I wanted to read you like a truly like the most Telegraph article I found in a really long time. 
um because it has all the bits of like being the telegraph but in like there's there's a twist to the tale um so for a bit of context the guy who wrote this uh william sitwell is uh normally the restaurant critic for the telegraph but he's he's having a go at some other uh material uh just so just so you get a flavor of the man a previous article published the day before this one uh called on uh said that it was necessary for men to have quote unquote a non-negotiable man cave to ensure marital bliss ah i i i hate this (laughs) infantilization of of being an adult so fucking much i consider this the like you know the right wing version of um adulting in is yeah. that awful cringe mm. ah i hate it so much <laughs> Right. So, but this this article is not that one, though. I read it and I was like, "Oh, we could well, maybe we we'll do, do do that one another day," because it is also atrocious. So this oh, one boy. is um, in response to a to the publication of a, a book called "A Very Private School." It's the um, memoirs, the school memoirs of Charles Spencer, who is the brother of Diana. You know. Um, she of the Fiat Uno, um, and uh, a, a high aristocrat with a big estate, you know, of, um, and he wrote this book um, about his time at a public school called Maidwell Hall. Uh, incidentally, it's also where uh, William Sitwell, the author of the piece, went. Uh, that'll become abundantly clear during the piece. Uh, just a little bit of the the uh, of the review of that book from the Financial Times, just so we have like a bit of a sense of what what. Um, charles spencer talks about in that book just to just to keep that in mind when we start talking about when i start reading from the article uh this from the ft um the school so uh madewell hall provided to be uh proved to be an amputation spencer writes pastoral care didn't exist medical care including expecting boys to swallow laxatives without water if their bowels weren't operating regularly so as to minimize washing up boys were beaten with slippers if say they spilt their uh, milk a few times they were whipped with a cane for lying the bully of a headmaster mm. jake porch fondled some boys genitals shortly after he beat their backsides spencer Jesus alleges fucking christ and now i'll start reading from um this from this is uh, again by william sitwell the title is the relentless cruelty of the english upper classes is a defenseless myth cold dips bullying and meanness <laughs> Come on, Earl Spencer. Those experiences were valuable life lessons. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, that is that is that is a scorching hot take. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What if instead of reading the rest of this article, we? <laughs> <laughs> Steal yourself for a week of for a weekend of tough bashing. Earl Spencer's oh, childhood... Fuck. Yeah, I'm in for that. <laughs> I mean, so am I. But, like, this is one of those rare cases. And, again, like, I don't feel too bad for the guy. Because he has a massive stately home and, you know, is in with the royal family and so on and so forth. But, like, the horrors that this man describes in that book about his own childhood, I don't care how wealthy you are or where you come from. I wonder, that's still fucking scarring I and disturbing. If... I wonder if these immensely traumatizing events that took place in you know, these various rich people's childhoods has any bearing on the way they approach life in adulthood. Um, who's to mm. say, really? Mysteries mysteries yeah. abound. Um, Earl Spencer's childhood memoir is being trailed and he's taking a croquet mallet to the upper classes, private schools, the whole damn shooting match. Just the... Just good this. movie. Yeah. Again, good. Um, today, at the age of 59, a successful author, Chatelaine of one of the most beautiful stately homes in England, father of several very handsome, beautiful, and charming children, he is nevertheless scarred. <laughs> father of a, what was of that, a um... series of extremely handsome, large adult sons. <laughs> what was that word for like his relationship to the stately home? Chatelaine. Lord what of the, the Manor, whatever. That? It's just okay. it's just a very fancy way of saying owns big house. Um, anyway, 
sorry, not from decades of unpleasant of unpleasant prep dealings, nor the travails and tragedy of his older sister Diana, but from his prep school, his parents, and the filthy cruelty of the upper class system that saw him abandoned and desolate as a young boy. Again, I reference you to the stuff I just read from the Financial Times when you know this guy is when William Sitwell is just you know fucking just. Yeah. Writing in A Very Private School, the book, he talks about how he was starved of feminine warmth in his time as Madewell Hall in Northamptonshire as one of casual cruelty, sexual assault, and other perversions. The very fact of him being there, thus the deliberate and brutal decision of his parents, heartlands and entrenched members of the English aristocracy. If anyone's ever suspected that British toffs were a uniquely vile and merciless category of people, here is the proof. Now, again, in the book, I've I've read some of the 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 like the reviews, and it you know he does mention that one of the reasons um, his parents leave him at this fucking ghastly school filled with you know emotional and alleged sexual torture is that his parents you know a his parents both went to to public schools themselves and so said well good for us good for you and basically also said well we want to have the like a life without children but we have them so off to boarding school you go again you know my limited sympathies for people who live in homes with deer parks etc etc but still and all um one of their own a, an earl uncle to princes seriously landed stately housed replete with a deer park fine furniture and fabulous paintings is dishing is dishing the dirt from within as Prince Harry's spare attempted to tear down the monarchy, so Spencer's a very private For public sake. school, a very private school, bulldozes, buries, and flattens the British knob. Oh fuck! Good. Off. Like yeah, yes. It needs okay. destroying. We... Yeah. Like, How awful <laughs> that he's blowing the whistle on our mother of wild primary school. Like yeah. fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> A contrast, of course, with with you know uh, uh, good people. Um, your your classic dynastic grandee sitting in their frayed jumper, wondering if they might have in fact switched the heating off a little too early in the season, will be turning the pages of the weekend press as if they are sheets of lead. So you what? know the the. It's because the real aristocracy, the ones you know who are barely clinging on to their stately homes and you know can't afford to have the heating turned on, you know, like commoners or something, uh, will be dreading the press because you know somebody has said, look, public schools are actually an engine not just of class reproduction but of you know social and sexual torture, alleged sexual torture. Right, but did did you ever consider that they could actually afford to put the heating on if they would simply just not pay some cunt to deal with the bees? <laughs> or you know live in an in a normal size house yeah anyway here we, here we get into more of the you know uh um about the about how it is in fact the british upper classes that are being bullied for the british upper classes are at the constant mercy of brutal attack if any other sector of society was subjected to such repeated and remorseless assault, it would be the 10 past 8 subject on the Today programme. <laughs> <laughs> Very sincerely, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Questions would be asked in Parliament. George Galloway would retweet the outrages. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we fucking go. Wow. Yeah. I've got your fucking right here mate come and collect it yes scion <laughs> scion of even-handed application of of media hysteria george galloway <laughs> they're really gonna if they if they keep with this through line they're gonna build him up even bigger than he already fucking is like oh buddy <laughs> While the attack by memoir is less regular, the full frontal by the media is constant. Barely a week passes by without a savage portrayal of the upper classes on television. What, what does that mean? Like, literally, what does that mean? What, what are you referring to? Are you referring to, like, the like royal family being hounded by the press? Like, which, you know, is, I mean, not great for the people involved, but, like, ultimately, that is a result of the media and the and the royal family being so like dependent really on weird one another together. yeah like what, um, what the fuck are you actually talking about like it's not as I'll, though 
uh, fucking if it, Karl Marx is writing in the Guardian. <laughs> like, what, what are you talking a, about? If it's such an unbearable trauma to be a member of the aristocracy, then just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> there you well, go. Solved both of our problems with one stone. I'll do what that one Fucking aristocrat cunt. did when he inherited, which was he intentionally, like, he gave all his grounds, etc., to the National Trust, like, for real, for real, um, gave the money to charity and just went and got a fucking job and lived a normal life. Like, it was quite a scandal, and, it, you know, they didn't like to talk about it, but that is an option. You can just do. You can go, no, fuck it, and you abdicate can, You can just leave! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I have bought for myself an enormous gilded cage from which I cannot escape, except for the fact the door is completely unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> I've been told a million times that being a lord of the land is a real job, and if it's a real job, <laughs> then you can just fucking quit. Yeah. Well, Alistair, I'm, I'm glad you were asking. You know, what what are you actually on about? I'll I'll, I'll let Mister Sitwell explain. Take One Day, the rather beautiful and heartbreaking portrayal of a friendship from a couple's first meeting at their graduation until their early 40s. So what he's complaining about is Netflix series. Oh, is he going to complain about Saltburn as well? Yes, actually. Next paragraph. Oh, my God. So hang on, hang on. When he's talking about, like, nightly fucking on the television, rich people are getting attacked. Is that because he assumes someone is watching this on Netflix every night? Is that how he's worked that one out? Yeah, I think so. I am not talking about Leo Woodall's breathtakingly talented portrayal of the upper-class middle boy, De- middle-class boy Dexter, or his remote but thawing father, played by Tim McInerney. No, the Netflix series is so good because it feels so grounded in reality. There's just one bunch of unreal, over-the-top, horrid, cold, snooty, out-of-touch, brutal, seriously weird, unfriendly, unfriendly, and frankly revolting characters, and they are the toffs. Dexter's first wife, Sylvie. Turn your fucking TV screen on. <laughs> the, there is the pompous uh, mother, ignorant, thick and lazy, the evil twin brothers. I, I haven't watched this, so I'm not going to go into this. Um, they, you know, All the Aristos are portrayed as just evil. And then here, here we go, Alistair. Good. Sounds accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a real slice of life. <laughs> <laughs> Saltburn is also dishing it out with the portrayal uh-huh. of the titled mm. Catton family, eccentric, snobbish, mm-hmm. and peculiar, whose combined character and ownership of a grand house makes them deserving of depraved acts and death. Uh huh. And it's everywhere yeah, it's else. It's bad when you lay it all out like that. <laughs> it really is. And it's everywhere else. The pasting dished out to snooty British pilots by the cool US airmen of the Apple TV's Masters of the Air. Not to mention every episode, every episode, yes, every episode of every gentle evening drama. Every gentle evening drama? Yes, every gentle evening drama. Midsummer Birders, Heartbeat, Death in Paradise, every single modern Heartbeat. interpretation of Agatha Christie, Endeavor, Lewis, and Inspector Morse. Heartbeat's <laughs> still on. Did that not finish like fucking 20 years ago? <laughs> well, you mentioned Inspector Morse and that did, so... Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Fox imagine feet. sitting there for like 20 years with just, just like seething hatred of one particular TV <laughs> show. It's like these particular TV shows and oh by God, I'll show them right. I can't wait for the follow-up article about how Taggart was such an attack on Scottish identity. Just extremely here for it. <laughs> this lad's just sitting around watching UK TV gold and getting like furious. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> So, someone so, someone bought this guy a fucking Netflix subscription as like an attack. <laughs> do you think the, do you think his, his US publications talk about Colombo? Like is it is it branded like that by continent or <laughs> from Bergerac to a touch of frost, the toffs are bad, dim, and if they're not just <laughs> stupid, they are guilty. Jesus <laughs> Ooh, wow, I wonder I wonder how someone could come to the conclusion that the aristocrats in this country and you know broadly worldwide are out of touch with the common man. I wonder how no, the common man who watches Bergerac in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, what you need to you need to show this guy the Sweeney and blow his fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except Downton Abbey, 
which is written by the brilliant uber-posh scribbler Julian Fellows, but whose plot lines are so infuriating the characters become nothing more than unlikely cartoon characters. So, you know, even the good guys are bad guys, as it fucking turns out. It is hardly surprising, then, that the world is left with the view that the Toffs are categorically revolting. <laughs> it's tell it's Bergerac what done it. <laughs> yeah. This guy That's like, the only unfolding... reason that I hate Aristos is the telly. This guy unfolding a miles long fucking scroll with a with a like with two columns on it, one where all the bad like fucking aristocrats on TV and it's just going on forever with every TV <laughs> show that's ever been made, and on the right there's just, there's the good ones and it just says Top Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. I see what this guy's doing. He's saying that there aren't enough positive role models for rich people. That's what yes. the problem is. This is why they like this. <laughs> what you're saying that life imitates art? Surely not. What we need, and what we've always needed, is a Bergerac for the landed gentry. I see that so clearly now. <laughs> What if we made an entire new season of Poirot, but every single fucking time it's the gardener that did it? Do you think? Um, do you think this guy watches Succession and goes, oh, "Look at this for fucking Hoi Polloi getting such a sympathetic portrayal"? Like, do you think this man has brain? not watched any TV produced after Tony Blair became fucking prime minister? Well, except uh, Downton Abbey, but yeah, in general, he's yeah. heard of it. He's heard of it. He's not fucking watched it. <laughs> he tried it once and didn't like it. <laughs> Hi. so when a well-known aristo decides to blame his character defects his life struggles and his personal problems on his tough background publishers jump with glee and serializing newspapers pump out a jumbo bacs transfer the only reason mm-hmm. this guy is mad is because it's like this is a fucking open secret and he's just said that bit that yeah, everybody you're not supposed to say the thing loud. yeah yeah, you're not supposed to tell tell the fucking, you know, the plebs what's going on at these places and why we keep producing all these extremely fucked up humans. Also, did this, this, did this guy decide not to, like, you know what I mean, avoid the cliche of saying cut a check by mentioning a fucking backs transfer? Yeah, yes. Per- yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is the Telegraph, so, like, you are kind of mandated to sort of, like, spin out your word count like that. So what of this apparent and consistent cruelty? As I've written in the Telegraph, I was at Madewell some six years after Earl Spencer, but myself and my contemporaries, who still meet up every few years, were never molested. It, oh, it, well, that's it fine, then. To, Everyone I know has never me. been assaulted. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, strangely, there's like millions of children who went through the Catholic school system in the Catholic Church and came out totally fine, so I guess there's no problem there. Like, that's how needed. it works. We were presided over by an eccentric crew of peculiar characters, but we did not come away with long-term emotional trauma from the regular slipperings and canings and physical and mental bullying by all the boys, the filthy food, or the tutoring by a man who called himself Uncle Adolf and styled himself with the hair and moustache of Hitler. You are taking the fucking piss. This is this is a dude who has actually been severely traumatized, and this is his like no, I wasn't denial article about it. Holy shit! Well, it's good to know where the Ernolf Academy got its ideas from. Mm. <laughs> yeah, a real a real uh, a differentiation between the public and the private sector. Like, yeah, if you go Ernst- to the Ernst- 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 public sector. Yeah, if you go to if you go to a state school, then it's like it's a Charlie Chaplin mustache. If you go to a private, like you know, public school as they're called, uh, then they're just open about it being Hitler. Yeah, great, love it. We naughty boys paid the price for bad work, bad actions, or poor work. Uh huh. So canings, <sighs> slipperings, in, in what way? mental yeah. bullying, filthy food. Again, tutoring by a man who called himself Uncle Adolf. That was, you know, you only got that because, you know, you you didn't, you know, you weren't quite in the corridor as probably, you know, as mandated by Australia. Um, he, See, the problem also- is twofold. The problem is that all these children got caned and all sorts. The, the other issue is that as adults, they don't get caned and all sorts. Like... <laughs> 
These yeah. people are just the fucking. I'm telling worst. you now, but they do, but in a very different context. Hmm. Uh, we, we naughty boys paid the price for bad actions or poor work, but there was also much care and love from other teachers. He goes on to list some. I won't bother repeating it. Spencer may have been brutalized. Perhaps we were blind to it. But you weren't. You just said, like, one paragraph ago that you got caned, you know, and that there was a man called Adolf Hitler on staff. Right. Perhaps- no, no, but that was fine. That was fine. <laughs> and it was absolutely fine because he's not gay. You see, it's gay to complain about this kind of stuff. That's the problem. And this other guy should have just simply not been less of a male or whatever the fuck. It's just yeah. fucking pathetic. That's all this is. I mean, it's post hoc rationalization through and through, right? It's there's there's no two ways. Oh, about it. <laughs> if you if you if you if you, if you want some more of that, um, let me keep reading. Perhaps we bl- we were blind to it, and to this day repress our emotions when there were cold dips. Maybe, and mean- maybe. Mm. Yeah, maybe, just maybe. When there were cold dips at meanness, it was a life lesson that not all the world was warm and chocolatey. What? Yeah. It, you know, like when, when you're sexually abused, allegedly, by your headmaster, you know, after a caning, that was just a reminder that the world isn't always nice. You know, it just prepares you for, you know, normal life, if you will. Right, Yeah. It, yeah, it does. And then you take your station as someone above all that, and that gives you the right to then issue the canings. Yes. Uh-huh. Or to write a telegraph column, which is much the same, but in verbal form. Um, mm. I I didn't enjoy school as much as the life that began after it, but then that was because I was quite useless at sport and hated working. I, Are yeah. you sure it wasn't because no one was caning you? I and hated also- working is... Um- is a huge fucking giveaway there, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, but it's a point I will not fault the guy on. I never you do missed home. Hand it to him on this, this specifically. <laughs> I never missed home. The holidays were quite long enough. Brackets, as my mother would agree. You know, a little insight into the normal home life of uh, of William Sitwell. Mm. And what an adventure for small boys to be in a place designed specifically for them. Brackets, unlike, say, a home, with their friends morning, noon, and night. Why Why was your home not designed for you? What, what, you know, again, he writes this so he can go fuck himself, but, like, why was your home not like a home? Why did you, what the fuck was your home life like if you preferred, you know, Madewell School with the alleged sexual bully you know brutality and, and uh you know physical brutality why what what this is all, like, all this is just like the, the spartans have a lot to fucking answer for frankly <laughs> in, the, in the way it comes to raising kids because this is like it's the same structure just with like the degree of brutality toned down yeah the woods is actually just a big building with a guy called uncle adolf in it Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well, once again, this podcast comes to the conclusion that Jerry <laughs> Jerry Race War is to blame for to, to society's ills. Um, <laughs> yeah. There is unhappiness and misery in every walk of life, but also plenty of gentle kindness. Today's world of dangerous international affairs, economic uncertainty, and social earthquakes such as gender fluidity need strong individuality. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. You know, that's it's it's fine to go to public school and have like your emotional nerve endings literally like beaten until they stop functioning. I'm, then, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, this article is getting one star from me unless the guy dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so it strikes me that an early life of militaristic schooling of being left to fend for oneself for a time, to learn to forge friends in extremis, to suffer but live on filthy food, might help grow a little backbone. No. But but what what backbone are you trying to grow? The ability to, like, endure physical abuse? Like, what? why would you need to learn this skill? And to become a telegraph like, columnist also, so you can ignore also, the suffering of think, hundreds of millions of people. Do we think this guy has a fucking backbone? Because I fucking don't. <laughs> no. I mean, what I doesn't mean, kill you makes you more of a manly man, you see. 
Uh, they also teach one to enjoy experiences such as that as an adult, where you realize that you and you alone are responsible for your actions. So while Bane there is no so such thing as society, yes, indeed. Yeah, they teach for, they teach from young that no one is coming to save them. Got it. So while based on his track record, I have no doubt that Spencer's book will be a harrowing, well-written memoir. It will be a body blow to the English toff. But our and the world's obsession with the very English Aristo means they'll be up, back, and fighting with cold dips galore. Brackets now the heights of PE fashion for some time yet. What? End of article. Yeah. It's because, you know, even though all TV is nasty, uh, like, it's because people now do cold water baths, it means that the English aristocrat will survive forever. It'll be good. This is. I mean, I, I would compare the English aristocrat to the cockroach, but not in terms of survivability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i read this for a number of reasons but basically i if you wanted like fucking pure strain telegraph i think you, we could all agree this yeah, is that that's... i've never read anything you know and mm. i think it's all very important just to briefly loop back to to where we started that you know rachel reeve also expressed her expressed her concerns that this precious newspaper m together with the telegraph might be sold to a foreign bidder heaven forfend whatever could fucking happen mm. Yeah, it would be a tragedy if the Aristos didn't fucking control it directly anymore. Mm. It is a wonder that you can stretch out It Never Did Me Any Harm to, like, 2,000 words. 1150. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like... <laughs> it felt like 2,000, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In all facets, like, how do you write this? And, like, how do you, how do you like... The, the 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 sort of the, the the fucking nerve stapling that must occur in fucking public schools has to be fucking mm. something. I've never been to one and nor never seen one, but Jesus fucking Christ! I mean, mm. I I remember I watched um, Ash Sarkar sat down to interview. I can't I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, basically a guy who went through like uh, the public boarding school system and uh, and you know just corroborates all of this horrendous day in day out abuse that these children go through and it is impossible to deny that this you know systematic abuse of children has huge effects on the way they you know the as adults they approach the world women their own children you know all relationships like there is a reason like you know with Rob talking about the uh social reproduction that these schools are built well, to mean, en yeah. ensure and i it's... was just about to say like you know aristocrats have kids but this is actually how they, re they reproduce yeah, this yeah. is the factory yeah. this is where they're fucking rolled off a of production line as cunts just yeah i mean and also then like i mean again these are not new numbers and it's like it's barely worth reading at this point but like if you see like the amount of people who come from these types of institutions you know broken or not but certainly you know molded in a particular way who then you know literally take their places in the ruling class of this country it's like no wonder things it, everything is so fucked up if like in the year of our lord 2024 you could still write you know in defense of the of the child torment nexus like just do you remember Jesus. do you remember when it leaked a while ago someone actually had a, a brief flick of conscience and they leaked the eaten entrance question that was included, which was oh, that know, was the one. Credit, yeah, imagine, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, talked, we've talked about that before, and yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, like, percent. Yeah. Like, there's, a, there is a reason that this is the kind of question that uh, you have to be able to answer. Yeah, like are that, you that's... are you the cold calculating machine that uh, years of abuse should have formed you into? Yes or no? Yeah, I, are you prepared to turn the machine gun on on rioting, starving people, essentially? And like, this is the system that no. Are you prepared to, to justify? Right? Are you prepared yeah, to justify? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the yeah. crucial point. The void. <laughs> Talking about post hoc test. rationalization. <laughs> the void contest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, shall we move on and do some? You know, speaking of fucking monsters who had public school uh, educations, shall we do some commentary? Commentary at? I didn't get any. Oh well. 
ripped Hooray. luster. No, I did actually. I'm, I'm oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The ups and downs on this podcast are I know, incompetent. It's a real roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> well done, everyone, for ruining Mother's Day for the Princess of Wales. I hope you're <laughs> proud of yourselves. Yes. A youngish mum posts a lovely photo of herself surrounded by her beaming kids, and instead of saying, "Ah, <laughs> you pour over it like lunatic sleuths for signs of villainous photoshopping," end result, <laughs> mum issues an apology for doing something sweet on Mother's Day. You all need to get off the internet. Is that common or commentary at? She did neither of those things. I'm sorry. What the oh, shit. <laughs> Speaking of proof of life, by the way. Like, <laughs> God damn. No, uh, have, you not, have you not seen all the pictures that have been taken of her? Like, she's some kind of yeti. Mm. <laughs> I also, have you, caught the, have you caught the articles where they're promoting the, uh, what's that, Marches of whatever it is? Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one the, who we the can't mistress. actually explain. Mm, well, we, we can't explain on the podcast what her relationship to William is, but stay tuned. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, I pff, This this smells of com- commentariat, because I'm also willing to bet that whoever wrote this has some very salty opinions about Meghan Markle. Yeah, I, I think I think it's comment for the same reason. I think it's unhinged enough that it's like some royal stan essentially probably posting on Saint Meghan Markle. The uh, commentary only because of the phrase "villainous Photoshop." <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's the key phrase there because this this is indecipherable from like a comment from commentary because the only difference is if it isn't commentary at it's because they haven't got an article uh, haven't got a, their own article to to be able to post it in so i'm gonna say mm. commentary at as well i'll stick with comment it was uh, it was brendan o'neill in the spectator <laughs> <laughs> the, article was, the article was titled leave kate middleton alone <laughs> incredible I'm not why, even sad why didn't he post a tearful video declaring this <laughs> all right there was something deeply unsettling about this Taliban-style assault on a piece of art. It had a medieval feel. A clearly riled individual under the spell of some kind of fear or animus, using violence to try and cleanse the world of a sinful <laughs> image. It feels like year zero fanaticism, a Red Guard-style effort to scrub the problematic from public view. Is that comment <laughs> or commentariat? Commentariat. <laughs> yeah, commentariat. Yeah, commentariat. That's commentary. That this is about that protest that, that like sprayed some paint on the Bal- Balfour thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, and, if, in true Red Guard style, Stanley we should replace it, it with a bust of Lenin. Like, why not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was um, that was that was Brendan O'Neill in the Spectator. Oh wow! Is <laughs> it the same article? <laughs> and the, the article was titled "The Disgusting Defacement of Lord Balfour's Painting." Holy shit! He's been, like we haven't had a good Brendan in a while. He's, he's he's this is this is old school Brendan. This is you know. <laughs> See, back in my day, kids, boobs were everywhere. It was the 1990s and early 2000s. We had Pamela Anderson and Baywatch. Jennifer Love Hewitt graced the cover of Maxim with her boobs. Is that comment or commentary? We get it. You didn't have access to the internet. Jesus fucking Christ. (laughs) (laughs) It's that... I'm going to say comment. And it's it's fucking Jeremy Clarkson or Richard Madeley. Yeah, probably, but commentary it's uh that's comment jesus christ a defense of like loaded mag in the year of our lord 2024 <laughs> what the in, de- in defense of woods porno mags <laughs> <laughs> that was bridget fetacy in the spectator <laughs> Fucking More like the article Fet- the article Fet- was she. the article was titled sydney sweeney and the return of real body positivity oh, for <laughs> in case you're unfamiliar with that was there was an actress presented like fucking um, Saturday Night Live? Yeah, and when she like when she did the sign off at the end, you could see her boobs. Like holy shit! Revelator. Oh, is this you know why I mean? all the right wing freaks are like saying yes. that like looking at, yes. at like boobs is makes you yes. like a gay yeah. weakling now? Yeah, oh, no, okay. It, like that's that's it. Like she fucking she she like you wore a low cut dress on TV, and because she's like thin and blonde, we're back, baby. You know what I mean? Never again. <laughs> Never again will the the mean lady on the front of like swimsuit illustrated like fucking or whatever the fuck it was like haunt our thoughts. I'm so glad they made the boobs unwoke. Yeah. 
Maybe she's in a coma. Maybe she's dead. Maybe she's divorced <laughs> William. Maybe she's done a runner from royalty entirely. That there is not one sliver of proof for any of these wild claims matters not a jot to the truthers. They're far too they're too far down the rabbit hole of Kate hysteria, and many will never re emerge. Even when she returns to public life, they'll carry on. Brace yourselves for maniacal analyses of every future pick of the princess as nut as wonder. Is that really her? Is that comment or commentary? Oh, that's comment. I wanna say that's I wanna say that's fucking Brendan again, but I don't I don't even think the spectator would let you type that, so yeah. There's no, no way a, a British publication is going to mention the divorce word anywhere near the royals. No way. Comment. I, th- I, I think they would. I think Sarah Vine would. I think that's the Daily Mail. I'm going to say comment purely because we've had a lot of commentary yet. What did you say, David? I said it might be Brendan, but probably comment. Well, it was Brendan O'Neill and the Spectator. Shit! <laughs> From the previous article, leave Kate Middleton alone. <laughs> Two for one special. See, Jamie, I- I've figured out your M will be comment or commentary. At. You'll go to two places and you'll probably be bold enough to use one of them at least twice. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, no, just 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 observing. <laughs> hey, David's observing it in the hope that that causes you not to do it again. But the fact that you know he's doing that, no. means you might just do it again. And so, no, no. If anything, I'm right. hoping he continues to do it so that I can continue to get things right. <laughs> All right, thank you, the Riddlers. Can I get on with it now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out which drink is poisoned. Stop treating oh. Catherine like a convicted criminal. It was a happy photo of a lovely mum and her three wonderful children. From all the furore over the photo, anyone would think the Princess of Wales had committed the most heinous crime ever. Is that comment or commentary? Did you really just want to do an article read, Jamie? Is that what it is? Uh, I'm going to say comment. Yeah, I think this I, is the I rare think... double bluff. This is this is this is commentary, <laughs> but it's not Brendan. I think it's a triple bluff. I think this is a commentary again. Yes, Brendan. That was a comment in the Express. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle and boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, I, I assume that's all. Totally, the clues, yeah. Mr. Yeah, Podcast. <laughs> that was actually the best comment or commentary we've had in some time, so credit where it's due. That was fun. Oh. Well, um, thank you very much for listening. If you would like bonus episodes, they are available. Patreon.com forward slash practice. If we're doing the ad, do we want to do this at the end? No, yeah, yes. we do. Fuck it. Like, if you listen this long, I've given you another fucking reminder. We're doing this shit yeah. again. Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash practice cast. <laughs> Merch is available. Praxiscast.tml.com. Streams, they're things that happen sometimes. That's twitch.tv forward slash practice cast. And you should listen to Peace at Home a podcast that I was allowed to guest on for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, that I've also guested on, which is also good mm. in Patreon form, where we just ended up in annoying Sinan for 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had it coming. Yeah, I learned all about the Turkish George Galloway this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Who's also as a future heads up, I think somewhere early April, I'm going to be doing uh, another book review uh, with them on their stream. No. But- more details on as, the stream. As, as we get them. Oh, okay. So long as it's on the stream and not here, that's fine. You can eat your soulstroming elsewhere. Thank you very much. Do not stink up our kitchen with it. Well, I know that All threatening right. note. Yes. Um, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. See Bye. Ya. Goodbye.